The Song of Healing has the same first six notes as Saria's song, but played backwards and with a different rhythm. You can look it up if you want, but I'm not going into creepypasta territory. For now, anyway. According to the Gossip Stone and Romani Ranch in the Coco Shack, the All Night Mask is a torture device. It reads, a torture device of insomnia it seems to be available at the Curiosity Shop. And the description for the item says, it won't let you fall asleep, even if you want to. At the end of the game, Skull Kid asks Link to be his friend and says, you have the same smell as that fairy kid who taught me the song in the woods. This hints at Skull Kid being the same one that Link sold the Skull Mask to and taught Saria's song in Ocarina of Time. The arch at the entrance of Romani Ranch is actually the same arch that was used in Ocarina of Time for Kakario Village. So that means both signs say welcome to Kakario Village in both games. If Link's wearing the captain's hat during the fight with Akana, a cutscene will take place where he mistakes Link for Captain Kida. During development, Majora's Mask went by the name Zelda Gaiden. It was being developed for the Nintendo 64 disk drive add-on, and used the internal clock to play the game in real time. In the beta trailer for Majora's Mask, there seems to be an unused mask that resembles Adult Link from Ocarina of Time. Interesting. In the Astral Observatory, there's a picture of a dolphin hidden under a pot. It's thought to be a reference to the console Dolphin, the GameCube's codename at the time the N64 was out. There are unused cutscenes that show the Great Fairy um, training Link for his new abilities. Keep in mind, this was not finished. After protecting Romani's ranch from the invaders, and you help Crimea deliver the milk, you'll receive one of three rewards. Link can either get 200 rupees, Chateau Romani, or a hug. If Link chooses a hug, Crimea will hug Link, and a message will appear, saying, When you play any of the two Oracle games on the same Game Boy, there will be a special shop in Lyanna Village called the Advanced Shop. All items on sale only cost 100 rupees each. According to Hyrule Historia, there is supposed to be an item called the Magic Paintbrush. Concept art for Nehru shows her with this item. The very first dungeon in Oracle of Seasons is almost identical to the Eagle Labyrinth from the original Legend of Zelda. Early concept art of Onox shows him having a battle axe attached to his ball and chain. The Goron vase creates a paradox. The Goron in the present gives it to you and tells you it's a family heirloom. However, you go into the past and give that Goron's ancestor the family heirloom. There was a third Zelda game in development titled The Legend of Zelda Mystical Seed of Courage. The game was meant to come out after its prequels, but was cancelled after confusion came with linking all three games together. Onox's name is misspelled two times in Oracle of Ages, the first of which is when battling Twin Rova. In 
four swords, the player doesn't get a choice to name themselves, making it one of the few games to not have the player name feature. Navi Trackers is a minigame only on the Japanese and Korean versions of Four Sword Adventures. In this game, multiple players use the TV screen and Game Boy to search for members of Tetra's pirate gang. The Korean version of Navi Trackers is still in Japanese, but the manual includes instructions of how to play. Since Link is left-handed, he holds the Wind Waker contradictory to how an actual conductor would, in the right hand. Link is voiced by Sachi Matsumoto, the same person who voices Skull Kid from Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Kobali, the postman found behind the counter, was designed after the postman from Majora's Mask. Link has animations for swimming and floating in the water, but all of it's too thick for us to see through. Thankfully, the testing levels are clear water, so you can't actually see them. The three goddess statues are all references to Pikmin in their nose, mouth, and ears. The mountains around Ganon's tower include a small cave not visible to most. It's rumored that it may have been a longer route into Ganon's tower instead of the, well, pretty straightforward entrance. The game's file select screen undergoes a 7 minute day to night cycle, starting at whatever time the GameCube's internal clock is set to. It's little things like that that make you appreciate the Zelda games. The stars at night are not part of the skybox texture, they're vector models. Vector graphics are infinitely scalable, and having a textured skybox would look pixelated if looked at through the telescope. The game's main theme is a combination of the Earth God's lyric and the Wind God's aria, both of which are songs that you learn in-game. Link yells come on when he calls Medley or Makar. This means The Wind Waker is the first canon Zelda game where Link audibly speaks. Behind Garlov's desk, you can see the Bunny Mask, the All Night Mask, the Goron Mask, and the Keaton Mask. There also appears to be a bottle of Chateau Romani on the shelf. Inside the Master Sword Chamber, there are stained glass windows showing the Seven Sages, Link, Zelda, Ganondorf, and a few other characters from the series. There's an item hidden in the game's code called the Water Boots. They have no effect, but use the same animation as the Iron Boots. They may have been used for the same thing they were in Ocarina of Time. In one of the files for a game, there's a folder called Tinkle. The model shows the inside of a charred house, which uses two textures. The first of which is a cat eye face. The second is regular wood. The purpose of the model is completely unknown. There are a few test rooms that are unplayable in the final game. Some of them look like this, pretty odd, while some of them look like fully functional areas that you just have never been to before. This is because they had really no quests to put there or anything, and they can be accessed through emulators like Dolphin if you're interested in them. The logo for the game featured in pre-release materials shows the Master Sword, rather than the Force Sword that's in the game. There are several Super Mario enemies in the Minish Cap. These include bomb -oms, that are actually called bomb -oms, Spinies, which are called Spike Beetles, and Lockatoos, which share the same name. The Minish Cap is the only game in the series to feature an optional sound test. In one of the game's caves, far out of sight is a couple of Japanese letters. It roughly translates to the word mole. 
In the PAL version, the description for figurine 108 suggests hitting ice widrobes with the fire rod, an item that's not even in the game. There's unused animations for the decorative mailbox that appears in the post office in Hyrule Castle Town. In the first dungeon, there's a red-capped enemy mushroom that sprays spores. The enemy is named Puffstool and is a reference to Pikmin, the enemy that infects Pikmin and turns him against you. There are several unused audio clips still present within the Minish Cap. Many of these are remixes of songs from previous games, like Lost Woods from Ocarina of Time. In the English translation of the game, Princess Zelda mentions that light and darkness exist in a world of balance, giving the impression that darkness is actually a fundamental element of the Zelda universe. If you have a save from Twilight Princess, an emblem is unlocked as a bumper sticker for Samus's ship in Metroid Prime 3. One feature forgotten was the magic meter. Unused text hints that you need magic power in order to transform into a wolf. A magic meter can still be seen in screenshots, and most importantly, on the back of the game's case. Twilight Princess features the second highest number of pieces of heart, with a total of 45. In early trailers and betas of the game, Midna had blue and orange hair instead of just plain orange hair. The few shadow bears a striking similarity to the just-as-dark Majora's Mask. If you attack a cuckoo enough, you'll eventually take control of it. This bewildered many players, as usually you just get attacked by it instead. There's an unused model in the game called Meter Giant. It's suspected it was a placeholder model for measuring other objects in the game. Still, kinda looks creepy. Minna's voice clips are actually made up of scrambled pseudo-speech. When unscrambled, it's revealed that she's actually speaking in English. Which one will it be? Have you made up your mind? I'll take you there with my power. What do you think happened to those who try to rule with sacred magic? I have a request. Would you find a mirror? Don't go wrong! Using a lantern inside of Barnes's bomb shop will trigger a cutscene where Barnes will activate a sprinkler to put out Link's lantern. In the E3 2004 trailer, Nintendo reused voice clips of Ocarina of Time's Adult Link instead of the Twilight Princesses. Concept art of Sheik was drafted for the game, but was later scrapped. Her design may look familiar due to it being used in Super Smash Bros. Brawl. If you reset the game while your hand is above the quicksand in Arbiter's Ground, you'll be put into an earlier version of the game without icons on the screen. It's a difficult glitch to perform with a nice payoff. Twilight Princess was originally going to be a sequel to The Wind Waker. A presentation by one of the directors had all the Zelda games to date, and the one being worked on, Twilight Princess, was titled the Wind Waker 2 while in development. The fisherman from Ocarina of Time can be seen in a photo in Hina's fishing arena. She thinks she's related, but quote unquote, can't exactly prove it. Fire arrows were intended to be in Twilight Princess. They can even be found in the game's data and used in the game with the help of Game Shark. Unfortunately, they don't have an effect at all. While doing mandatory training, you'll duel with an armored skeletal warrior known as the Hero Shade. 
Lore has it that he was a famed swordsman in Hyrule, but died with regret of never passing on his expertise. According to Hyrule Historia, Hero Shade is the Hero of Time from Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. There are some Wind Waker assets left in the game. The file Item DL contains 21 items from Wind Waker, further suggesting that this game may have been a sequel. The seventh dungeon, City in the Sky, is rumored to be based off a M.C. Escher painting titled Another World. The creatures resemble Uka, the bird-like creatures from the game. Fier has Bullet Bill on the sleeve of his jacket, the enemy from Mario who flies through the air. Since Twilight Princess for GameCube, Link had always been left-handed. With the introduction of motion controls, the director made him right-handed, so it would be easier for most players to swing the sword with their right hand. Phantom Hourglass is the first game in the series that doesn't include any new tools. All the items have been previously featured in every other Zelda game. Also, it's the first 3D Zelda game to not include a playable instrument, unlike pretty much every other one. Phantom Hourglass contains an island called DS Island, an island in the shape of a DS light when shown from the sea, and an original DS when shown from the island itself. This concept was almost used for Wind Waker. In the Japanese version of Spirit Tracks, several direct quotes refer to Tetra being Princess Zelda's grandmother. There's a full 3D model of the entrance to the Temple of the Ocean King in Spirit Tracks code. This model goes entirely unused, although you do get to visit the temple through a warp instead of a main entrance like this one. There's an unused dungeon, internally labeled Player DNGN, in the code for Phantom Hourglass, accessible only in the PAL version and through Action Replay. The dungeons were likely used for testing. Skyward Sword has the longest development period in the history of the main franchise. Rupin has personal and physical traits similar to the Happy Mask Salesman. Both have similar facial expressions, mood swings, and own shops. They both do that creepy hand thing too. In early trailers of the game, Phi was not implemented whatsoever, and the player had the Helian Shield and Master Sword before they were even available. The main theme of Skyward Sword is an orchestration of Zelda's lullaby, only played in reverse. Hyrule of Skyward Sword has the most advanced technology, with the dungeon staffed entirely by robots. Hyrule Historia says it's the first game in the timeline, though, which leads to confusion. The American box art contains Helian language from Twilight Princess, even though Skyward Sword introduces a new language. The Helian in Twilight Princess is scarcely featured within the game, but is indeed there. The goddess harp, played by Zelda and Link, is the same harp used by Sheik in Ocarina of Time. Quoting Hyrule Historia, it was decided that all residents of Skyloft would be modeled after birds. This explains why some of the residents have bird-like features. <clears throat> We're looking at you, Groose. When talking to Kukiel right in Skyloft, she'll say that she was told it's too dangerous to go out at night alone. Referencing the iconic phase from the original Legend of Zelda, it's dangerous to go alone. 
In The Skipper's Retreat, there's a reference to the film Titanic. There's a painting of two robots in front of a ship, one holding the other with its arms out. Skyloft contains a hidden area filled with rimlets, those cat things. This area is near the goddess statue and is only accessible after obtaining the claw shot. You should check it out for yourself. After completing the Thunder Dragon quest, if you talk to Golo at least twice, he'll tell you that he's jealous of your discovery. From this point on, the game becomes impossible to complete, and the events at Elden Volcano won't trigger, making the game completely unplayable. The team found that a strict top-down view made the game look boring, so they made it to where all non-environmental models are skewed to slightly face up at the camera, rather than the classic Link to the Past look. The songs used in the Japanese commercials for A Link Between Worlds is a remix of the infamous song used in the Japanese A Link to the Past commercials, which feature... uh... this. Many paintings in Link's house reference other Zelda games. Firstly, a picture of Link's uncle from A Link to the Past hangs in a left corner. For some reason, his eye is a little off though. Paintings of Medley and Makar's instruments from The Wind Waker appear in the milk bar in the right corner. Portraits of Makar's face and the crawfish symbol that's on Link's t-shirt from Wind Waker appear on the wall of a house in Kakario Village. Everything in the game is slanted to emulate the visuals seen in A Link to the Past. Even some of the textures were simply remastered. Majora's Mask can be seen on the wall of Ravio's store, which completes the trilogy of games that have featured masks from other games, mainly Majora's Mask, obviously. If you don't buy anything from the merchant, he'll say, Alibnitimos yub, which is buy something will ya backwards, what the shopkeepers say in the original Legend of Zelda. Wait, what? You may be asking, how are we at the end of the main series and only at 190 numbers? Well, that's because it's time for the top 10 things you didn't know about the CDI games. Squad of we are off! Boo! You suck! In the intro to the game, Ganon's name is misspelled G-A-N-N-O-N. The game's testing period took nearly two years, longer than the time that it was spent developing. One of the reasons is due to all the bugs. Nearly all of the scenery in the game were shots taken of Los Angeles. The image's file sizes took up so much of the game's RAM it had bad loading screens. The story doesn't take place in Hyrule, but rather in a fictional place named Tolmac. If you reverse Tolmac, it spells out Camelot the name of the castle and court of King Arthur. There were two unused backgrounds for the intro and ending cutscenes, one from Faces of Evil, and the second one is unique to the game. The cutscenes were outsourced to a small group of Russian animators. They were flown into the United States and drew the cutscenes in a small apartment for six months. What a fantastic waste of time. In Wand of Gamelon, the rubies that we usually see are referred to as rubies instead. I'm guessing this was a mistake on their part. The magazine Electronic Gaming Monthly considers The Faces of Evil to be one of the worst video games ever made, not only for its awful dialogue and gameplay, but for finally ruining the series' good track record. 
The voice acting, often criticized as misdirected, amateurish, blah blah blah, was done by AFTRA actors, locally. One of the most shameful facts about the game, the three games are some of the best games the Philips CDI has to offer. Ignoring those games, the Zelda series is a legendary string of games, a very rare sort. It's clear why we don't include those CDI games, in all seriousness. Instead of having to reinvent itself for when 3D rolled around, Zelda just seemed to come naturally, and some of their recent games are still in 2D and do well. With Zelda U coming up, it seems Link will be reinvented again soon. However it's done, I have no doubt that Nintendo and their directors will make it great, just like every other one they've made. Hope you enjoyed the video, and you guys have a nice summer. Lamp oil, rope, bombs? You want it? It's yours, my friend, as long as you have enough rubies.